This is the second um, video I wanted to do on uh, trig identities. And what I decided to do was, um, well, what I have done in class is I, I found these different identities that I wanted to, to prove because they there were certain strategies that they use. Um, and we're, we worked through all of them in class. And then we created, um, I've done this at Christmas time before, so that's why they're Santa. So we were, and I thought it was clever. Um, that's questionable, but whatever. Okay, so we um, we worked through these and we came up with a list of strategies. So I decided to make a video talking through the notes that I did. So I, I printed out what I had done on the smart board, um, and then I want to talk through these. So if you've been absent, you're totally you're not totally up a creek. Okay, so um, so this first one. Um, what we what we looked at here is we recognized that if I had one minus sign, um, okay, first, pick a side. You have to, have to, have to stay on that side the whole time. You cannot cross over to the other side. Okay, that's the nature of these problems. Um, you are proving that this is equal to that, and you know it when you can turn this into that. Okay, so if you try and cross over, you're... Um, I can tell you now, I will take off points, um, a lot of points, so just don't. Um, so one of the first things that we recognized on this is that we rearranged it so that we could see one minus sine squared. That's one of the Pythagorean identities, or we like to jokingly call it the big daddy. Um, and so rearranging was a good idea. This be one minus sine squared x became cosine squared x. Hang on to everything. You can't just um, have pieces of it. This, this, each line needs to be equivalent to what came before. Um, maybe I should put equal signs, but whatever. Um, so that becomes cosine squared x plus sine x, and then uh, over cosine, giving me cosine squared divided by cosine. Um, well, then I can split the numerator. So keep in mind, um, splitting the numerator is fine, but if you try and split the denominator, I don't know, something like this, um, this is equal to 2 sevenths, which is less than half. Um, this 2 thirds plus 2 fourths, is equal to something, well, bigger than less than half. <laughs> this is already one half. That's bigger than a half. You add it together, um, you get a bigger number. So this, you cannot, you cannot split the, the denominator like that. Um, so, but you can split the numerator. So if I had 2 plus 3 over 4, that would be equal to 2 fourths plus 3 fourths. Okay, so something like that is fine, um, but you cannot, 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 cannot split the denominator. Um, so when, once we split the numerator, then we, they, this simplified down to cosine of x and sine over cosine is tangent. So the ones that we, the strategies that we wrote down from that one, where we wrote down the big daddy, we, we like to give it a nickname, and that's that sine squared x plus cosine squared, or theta, whatever, is equal to 1. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget um, your variables. Um, so if you don't have theta, and, and you can't change it throughout, so pick a variable, preferably the one I give you, and stay with it. Um, and then when you divide through by cosine squared, you get this one. And when you divide the original by um, sine squared, you get, uh, yes, you get this. The other thing that we wrote down from that first example was to rearrange terms, and then we wrote down split the numerator, okay? Um, the next one, oh, here's me reminding people of stuff. Fantastic. The next one we looked at, um, we saw this was cosecant x plus cotangent x times 1 minus cosine. Um, obviously, there's more stuff happening on the left-hand side, so we started there. And what we realized is that we can write everything, often a good strategy is to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I ended up getting, um, and then they already had a common denominator, so then we got to 1 plus cosine over sine. Um, and then I recognized that this is a plus b in the numerator times a minus b, which equals a squared minus b squared. So this up at the top right here, when that multiplied, that worked out really nicely. It gave us to one, gave us one minus cosine squared x over sine of x. This, hopefully, you soon to, you will recognize very soon that that's part of the big daddy. That gives us sine squared x over sine, which is just sine, and that equals what we needed, and we were done. I didn't put a check mark, but I like to. Um, from that one, we pulled out the strategies. We, we were pointing out that a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. Likewise, if we have, oh, uh -huh, this was wrong. This should have been squared. Caught it now. Um, a plus or minus b squared is equal to a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared. So sorry about that first period. Um, these, if you don't know these, um, like, like you know your own name, if you don't know them that well, go home and write them on your bathroom mirror. 
Um, use dry erase marker. These have to be something that you that just pop out all the time for you. Um, and then so we also wrote from that example right in terms of sine and cosine. Okay, the next example we had, um, this is one where some people might be tempted to try and cross the equal sign, but I'm going to insist, and hang on, there's, we did it two different ways. I'm going to insist that you stay, pick a side and stay on it. So what we did, we picked um, this one. Once you've done a few of these, you start to recognize the pattern. Um, this one, it doesn't matter if you pick the left or the right side because it's, they're pretty similar as to what, uh, what I find to be an effective strategy. Um, so what we did here is, um, this is, anyway, we recognize that if I multiply by, I can always multiply by one. Well, so I picked a funky form of one, um, and we went one plus cosine of x times one minus cosine of x. So this is a plus b times a minus b, giving me one minus cosine squared of x. I could have distributed through in the numerator, but I, I have seen a number of these, and I know where it's going. So I didn't. But if you do, you distribute through, and then you factor it back out, so it's not the end of the world. You just did a little more work than you needed to. Um, the denominator here is the big daddy again, gives me sine squared x, and then this sine over sine squared leaves me with sine in the denominator, which is exactly what we had over here. Um, in class, somebody asked um, what would have happened had we started on the right-hand side. So I took, this was the right-hand side right here, and I multiplied it by a funky form of 1, but instead of 1 minus cosine of x, I multiplied by 1 plus cosine of x. Um, and then I didn't finish the last step, but it was it, it's pretty obvious that we're almost there. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, so on that one, we wrote down uh, multiply by a funky form of 1, um, call it whatever you want. And it, for in, to be more specific, sometimes the conjugates can be really helpful. So if you have an a plus b, use an a minus b. Or if you have um, a minus b, use a plus b, that sort of thing. OK, the next example we did um, looked like this. This is 1 plus cosine of x over sine of x um, plus sine of x over 1 plus cosine of x. So this is one where we got a common denominator. We recognized that this one needed a 1 plus cosine of x, and this term right here needed the sine of x. So I multiplied by two different funky forms of 1. And then this, up right here, you'll notice this is a plus b squared, which is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, which gave me this part right here. And then I had the plus sine squared x. And then notice, I need a new color, that this right through here is the big daddy. So sine squared x plus cosine squared x, or write it the other way, is equal to 1. We put the 1 and the 1 together, giving us 2. So 2 plus 2 cosine x. Then we factored out the 2. And then at that point, we were able to cancel um, and giving me 2 over sine of x, which is the same thing as saying 2 times 1 over sine of x, which is 2 cosecant x. You'll notice um, I don't cross things out. So they did um, each, each step needs to be equivalent to the one that came before. Um, and so I don't cross out as I go. I leave it there, and then it's it's obvious that it's, it's crossing out. But this step, um, and I prefer that you not. It's a, it's a proof you don't want to cross things out as you go. So just each step needs to be clearly equal to what came before um, and so forth. Um, on that one, I think we wrote down common denominator. And then we talked about factoring because we factored out a 2, was it? Yes, we factored out a 2. Um, and then sometimes, and that one we factored, but sometimes you may have to, to multiply it back out or to foil, call it what you like. Um, and so we wrote that as our, in, our, in our bag of tricks. Column tricks, column strategies, whatever. Um, the last one that I did, is that correct? Yes. The last one I did um, was cosine to the fourth x minus sine to the fourth x equals cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Um, on this one, we recognize that this is a squared minus b squared, which factors down to a minus b, or a plus b times a minus b. Either way, it doesn't matter. I just did the plus first. Um, this one looked scary, but then as soon as we see that this is, um, the fourth power is the square root of something to the fourth power or something to the second power, then this factored quite nicely. And then all of a sudden, here's the big daddy. That equals 1, and it's gone. So that, um, I would say that's a pretty straightforward little problem. Hopefully this was helpful. I will say again, you have to, have to, have to practice. 
Um, you will recognize what strategies are most efficient and most effective once you have done a bunch of these. So um, head to the calendar. I've posted all sorts of problems for you to practice, um, and I feel like I've done my part. Now it's time for you to do yours. Good luck. Work hard.